Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, on Roku, Dwyer Boxing, and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. One of the teams that, in my opinion, needs to be an anchor of your futures betting are the Seattle Seahawks. Right? Understand, if I asked you to name me the best quarterbacks in the National Football League over the last three years, I need for you to just mentally think of your list, take a step back, and realize that Russell Wilson was one yard away. One yard away from beating Peyton Manning and Tom Brady in back-to-back -back Super Bowls, right? You might recall last year, the quarterback he beat in the NFC Championship game was Aaron Rodgers, right? In my opinion, Russell Wilson is an elite quarterback. I think the public is a little bit caught up on his height. It's caught up on his scrambling ability right the public seems to be completely unaware of the fact that Fran Tarkington got to numerous Super Bowls back in the day and I think there's an opportunity here understand the money that he just got for his deal is very team friendly I know the press is reporting it as 60 million guaranteed dollars right 87 million over four years you need to look closely at the last word extension right it's a four-year extension he's only owed 1.5 million dollars for this coming year according to some websites he's agreed to accept seven hundred thousand dollars with of course the 30 million dollar signing bonus right but understand that's very cap friendly that's very cap friendly if you do the math, you're going to find out that his real deal, when you factor in this coming year, actually averages less than $18 million a year. I believe it's a shrewd move both by Wilson and the team because it locks in a superstar quarterback and it gives the team some financial flexibility. Now, right now, on the futures... Seattle's a plus 450 to win it all. Now let's talk about why I like futures, right? Better than I like over-unders in terms of win totals. It's because while I expect, I fully expect Seattle to win more than 11 games, while I expect them to get the over, the odds I'm getting there aren't as rich as the plus 450 that I would get taking Seattle to win the whole thing. Right? Let me say, too, understand a plus 450 sounds bold. But understand that you can hedge the play later. In other words, if Seattle gets to the playoffs, at that point, I can put some money on their opponent simply to recoup some of the investment I've made in Seattle. These season-long bets give you more time to hedge, right? And you have more to hedge with because your expected winnings are a plus 450, not a minus 110 or a minus 130 off some over-under uh, play. So just keep that in mind. Now let's talk about why the plus 450 is something you need to think about taking now, right? Rather than after the season starts. And keep in mind, one of the secrets to futures is that you can bet futures all the way up until the end of the season because the casinos continue to post them, right? So on teams that are still viable for the playoffs, you're going to notice the futures move. The challenge to you, the gambler, is to pick the futures at a level that's advantageous to you, hoping that once the season starts, you won't be able to get that deal. Here's why the plus 450 
The plus 450 on the Seahawks is a deal you want to take right here. And today is August the 1st, 2015. Right? The Seahawks open the season against the Rams. Now, think about it. The Seahawks have one of the best defenses in football. You know, the cast of characters. Right? Richard Sherman. Earl Thomas. Cam Chancellor. I know he's holding out now. They'll take care of him. Right? You know the Seahawk defense is brutal. Now, just keep in mind that they're going up against a St. Louis team that will have a new quarterback, Nick Foles, starting his first regular season game for the team. I know Todd Gurley has been cleared to play, but Todd Gurley's a rookie who'd be playing in his first regular season game. Right? I don't know about you, but for me, a team that was the defending champion, that then misses out on beating the Patriots by one yard, right? That's returning most of the, the key people on their defense. That's returning Marshawn Lynch, who, unlike Gurley, has NFL Pro Bowl experience, who's returning Russell Wilson. I'll take that team every time over a team with newbies at key positions, like the Rams have. If Seattle opens 1-0, you're not going to get the plus 450. You know that. Those odds are going to dip. Now, I'll agree. Week 2 might be a loss. It's one of the toughest games on the Seahawks calendar. Right? It's a replay of the NFC Championship game. Seattle has to go to Green Bay to play Green Bay in Green Bay. You can imagine Green Bay feels they should have been in the Super Bowl. You had weird stuff happening, right, in that NFC Championship game. Two-point conversion, onside kick, right, really weird stuff. Well, let me just point out that this game is crucial because Green Bay will have started the season on the road at Chicago, a team they should win because Chicago has a new head coach, right? The last time I checked, Chicago still has Jake Cutler as their starting quarterback, right? Brandon Marshall's gone. That team's not the same. But when we talk about rivalries, you know that Green Bay Chicago Bear rivalry is one of the core rivalries in NFL history. You know that game's going to be emotionally charged. Let's say Green Bay wins that game. Are they going to be ready for Seattle week two? Now I'm assuming they are. Right? But just understand. If Seattle beats Green Bay Week 2 in Green Bay, then Seattle, with one of the league's best home field advantages, will then play their home opener Week 3 against those Bears. Right? Understand, Seattle, if they play Green Bay, let's say they're 1-0. If they beat Green Bay and they're 2-0, you know you're not going to get the plus 450. If they lose to Green Bay, keep in mind, they'll already have a win. I'm giving them the win week one over Nick Foles in his Ram debut. Right? They'd be one and one. I don't think the casinos will panic. I don't think the line's going to jump to plus 500. Everyone understands Aaron Rodgers is one of the top quarterbacks in the league. Right? Everyone understands Green Bay narrowly missed out on the Super Bowl last year. Now let's talk about Seattle week three. I'm just going to go through Seattle for the first four weeks. Week three, they play Chicago at home. Think about that. Right? Chicago, new head coach. I know he used to be, you know, the coach for Peyton Manning. Okay, fine. 
But just to understand the logistics, how bad this game is for Chicago. You got a new coach, and guess what? This is going to be his first road game. Because Chicago plays the first two games at home. This is going to be Seattle's home opener. Let me just ask the obvious question. Who do you think is going to win? Right? You know, a good rule of thumb is to fade these new coaches in their first road game. Right? So let's say Seattle's 2-1. and one. Again, you're not going to get the plus 450. Then, of course, they play Detroit at home. Now, understand how bad this game is for Detroit, an indoor team. Right? Understand this will be, in week four, Detroit's third road game. Think about that. Their third road game. By the way, the team Detroit plays the week before having to travel to Seattle, that's going to be their first home game. And that's going to be against the Denver Broncos. Do you think Detroit is going to be ready for their third road game in week four against Seattle in Seattle after having played Denver at home in week three? I don't. So my point to you is simply expect Seattle to get out the gate fast, right? You're not going to be able to get this futures prop of plus 450 again for a while, right? Not only that, understand that when you have favored teams holding value at their posted odds, that means that other teams, you're getting longer odds on them. So let's say week one. You're watching football and you see the Baltimore Ravens, a team I suspect will be better than advertised. You see them take off. Or let's say you see Frank Gore and Andre Johnson mesh immediately with Andrew Luck and the Indianapolis Colts. And let's say you start to look at those teams and say, hey, this team looks like it has legs. Well, just understand you'll still be able to get them at longer odds than you'll be able to get Seattle at that moment in time. So my point to you is don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Right? The current two-time reigning NFC champion still has its core. Marshawn's still there. Russell's still there. Richard Sherman's still there. Earl Thomas is still there. Did I mention that they added Jimmy Graham? This team's still good. And you're getting a plus 450 on them. And it looks to me like they're going to be out the gate in a hurry, right? First four games on the road against the St. Louis Rams, on the road against Green Bay, right? Think about it. They still have eight home games after that, right? That Green Bay game is crucial because if they win that Green Bay game and if they're 2-0 and oh, going into week three, folks, it's over in the NFC West. It's over. I know the Arizona people are cringing. San Fran, I'm sorry. You have no chance. Right? If they're one and one, understand week three, they have the antidote for any losing streak. And that's the Chicago Bears at home. Then week four, you get Detroit at home. Right? I think Seattle gets out the gate 3-1 and one at a minimum. I think this plus 450, you need to take it here. Maybe you'll luck out and have an opportunity to get it later in the year. Right? End of October, November. Why would you want to wait that long to get this quality pick? Understand, 
once you lock up Seattle on your futures, then you can think about other teams. Green Bay, I know a lot of people are hot and bothered. You can see if McFadden and Joseph Randall actually are a good running back tandem for the Dallas Cowboys. You can figure out whether Jason Pierre-Paul has nine fingers, has eight fingers, whether he still has his game, right? But early in the season, we need to get value on the best. I think the plus 450 on Seattle is worth it, especially given their first four weeks. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Share information for the gambling community here on this website in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.